Solomon said, knowledge or knowing facts without the wisdom of how to engage them and make them a part of your life profits you nothing. How exciting though, when you learn how to take the system that God himself as Jesus Christ delivered to the earth and make it experiential and real in your life. That's what we're learning today on the kingdom system, a pattern for guaranteed success. in the study of the kingdom, the process that we can gain knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. When we know the facts and we can separate the facts from all the stuff that we've heard up to this point, and we understand then how those facts can be applied to our life, and when we apply them to our life, that's wisdom. We take the knowledge and convert it to wisdom and then there's another step that we're going to talk about called understanding. Knowledge becoming facts, becoming applicable in our own lives and experiential in our relationship with the living God. And then understanding because then we understand how to apply what we've learned to humanity. Because one of the things that you learn in the learning system for the kingdom is that Everything God did, he did it just for you. If you had been the only person on earth, God would have done it for you. But the truth is, it's not just about you. We're talking today about how the system that God himself as Jesus Christ delivered to the earth, how it works experientially worked out in the daily living of our life. Because again, like Solomon said, having the facts, knowing that it's there, but not knowing how to engage it and apply it profits you little. We believe that this system is for your profit and that it will help you to live a successful and meaningful life. That's what the kingdom system is all about. So what we discovered in, the, in our previous studies is that the kingdom of God is the government of heaven and the authority of heaven. And we have the ability to call that to the earth. All of the forces and all of the powers of heaven are available to the citizen believers in the kingdom. We can and we should act upon and engage all of the forces of heaven to intervene in our situation, our circumstances, and our relationships. Now, how would, do we do that? We do that by understanding that the kingdom of God is the system that God himself as Jesus Christ delivered to the earth so that humanity could live successfully on the earth, but again, not just for the earth, for the hereafter. So when we understand that and when we know how to operate in that knowledge for ourselves, that is powerful. So today, what we're going to talk about are a few things that I want, to, I want to make really personal, and I'm going to change. As I began, I told you God began to teach me about his kingdom, his system, and he told me that I was successful, but I had not touched the success that he planned for me. Now, that was good news. I enjoyed that, and I was excited about that. And what he told me was, in order to walk in the plan that he has for me, and he has a very specific plan for everyone who ever enters time, he told me that I had to understand his system and how it works. And then he told me three things that just tore up my religious mind because I was probably as religious as anybody could be, raised in a, brought up in a very fundamental relationship. So as God began to teach me about kingdomnomics, and that's interesting there, he gave me the name when he told me to write the book. He said, I want you to write the book, and I want the title to be Kingdomnomics. And I said, I have never heard of Kingdomnomics, Lord. And I had never heard of it before then. And before I did that and wrote the book, 
Some people have engaged it since then, but I had never heard that before. Kingdomnomics means the laws and conduct of a kingdom relationship. It learns how the kingdom operates. So when I began to write about kingdomnomics, I began immediately to see, and I would say to the Lord, I said, now, Lord, wait a minute. He would tell me something. I would say, boy, that sure doesn't sound religious. And I said that two or three times and my spirit to the Lord, and he finally said, good, because I'm not religious. And I thought, wow, not religious? What does that mean? And then as I looked at it and as I dwelt more on that, he began to explain to me that his word was not religious. He's not religious. His word's not religious. The kingdom is not religious. So that really changed my concept and the way I viewed what God was teaching me. So as I began to look in that and I found out that God was relational, there's a particular passage of scripture that I want you to make a note of and I want you to write it down and read it and, and record it and listen to it. It's in Matthew 11 and 28 through 30 and it's uh, in the message translation. And here's what he says. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Here's the key. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Now, does that sound like a religious God or does that sound like a God of relationship? And that's what he began to tell me. So I began to say, Lord, but all these laws, all these regulations, A.W. Tozer said, the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about God is the most important thing about you. You see, we have formulated through our environment a real view of God as the most religious person that there ever was. And nothing could be farther from the truth. And when you search the scriptures and when you search the references, you find that God is not religious in any way. Here's what he said. I'll walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Walking with you, work with me. See, we have inserted religion into that equation. It's an interesting awareness that when God fellowship and communicated with Adam and Eve in the garden, there was no religion. It was strictly a relationship. And when Adam and Eve transgressed, and God came looking for them in the garden. He didn't say, Adam, what have you done? What did he say? Adam, where are you? That is a, that is a, a statement of relationship. That's what God wants you to be in. So if it doesn't work by regulation and compliance, you know, people say, God, it wouldn't do that to people. God is not that kind of person. But some of us were taught and have this picture in our mind of God as a big sheriff in the sky with about a 12-foot 45 looking for us to be able to, to shoot us out of the saddle every time we do something. But that's not the God that we find in scriptures. This is a God who loves us and who has a plan for our success. And how does it work? It doesn't work by regulation and compliance. It works by dynamics. I had written the book entirely, and I was editing. God wakes me up early in the morning. Three o'clock, I'm sitting at my computer wanting to write about the laws, uh, uh, the law, kingdomnomics, the laws of conduct and behavior. And as I did, I'd finished the book and everything, and the Lord said, you can't call them laws. I said, now, wait a minute, Lord, that's what you've told me. That's what I've shared. And he said, Charlie, they are, in a sense, laws, but more the, than laws, their dynamics. I said, well, God, what's a dynamic? How does that work? I looked it up and studied it, and an interesting, the definition that they have in the dictionary for dynamics is this. 
It's an interactive system involving competing or conflicting forces. In other words, you do something and then there is a reaction. There's something that goes. So in the book that we wrote, I wrote this second book entitled Kingdom Nomics, The Dynamics of Conduct and Behavior, Taking It Away from Laws, because we believe that laws, if we nobody sees us and we don't get caught, we can get away with it. But that's not the way a dynamic works. A dynamic works with the inertia. When you take an action, it contains the inertia that leads you to a pre-described outcome. We're going to go into that more and more uh, in our second portion of what we do. And you will see, and it will open up for you how the kingdom system works. It works through dynamics of conduct and behavior where you choose an action and the inertia to take you to a pre-described outcome is there. We look forward to it. We're going to take a break now. And when we come back, we'll go into that. And we believe the Holy Spirit, God's going to make that clear to you. Our solar system and every created thing on the earth operates within a system. This is the result of design. Each system is definable and its operation is predictable. With great accuracy, the influences and the impacts of outside forces and the chosen actions of humanity on each system can be charted and forecast. There are dynamics of action and reaction for each system. Just as with the physical, scientific, mathematical, and all other systems, the kingdom system operates through dynamics, actions of conduct and behavior. Dynamics are an interactive system that involves competing and or conflicting forces. They are more than laws that involve regulation and compliance. The outcomes and the results are predictable and are completely determinable, as are the results of gravity or inertia. When we know and when we understand the dynamics of the kingdom system and the related actions and reactions, we can choose the outcomes of our lives for success. From Charlie Lewis, the author of The Kingdom System, a pattern for guaranteed success, comes a new book that will change your life forever, Kingdomnomics. In this book, you will learn the secrets to the kingdom system as it pertains to your everyday life and how to get the desired results for your destiny. This book will change the way you think about God's system for success. For your gift to Kingdom School and Ministry, receive Charlie's new book, Kingdomnomics, today. What I found out about Kingdomnomics is our choices determine our outcomes. We kind of knew that, I believe we did, but we didn't know the full impact of that in a living relationship with the living God. In the book Kingdomnomics on page 68, I wrote uh, about the, the dynamic of choice, chapter 7, and I call it the rule of ifs and thens. And how I came to that, I remember when I was studying uh, Kingdomnomics and preparing to write the book, how that the Lord just calls the ifs and then in Scripture, which in reality I've shared with you, that the Scriptures are actually our Constitution. That is the values and the principles and the precedents that we have agreed to govern ourselves by. That is our governance document. And when I began to study that, he caused the scriptures and the places where he said, if and then. How many? If my people, if you do this, then I do this. So I've taught a, a, a study for uh, quite a few years, and I always send out the material we're going to review before. 
So when I began to be prompted to look at the ifs and thens in the scripture, I had it typed out single space on a, a document to send out that we printed. And I, I didn't pay any attention to that because that was just the material that God gave me and I was putting it down. When we started coming together to study, the people were saying, my Lord, that is a long document. And I said, really? And I went back and looked and single space in our constitution, there were more than a hundred type pages of ifs and thens. And what the Lord said by that, this is the dynamic, an interactive system. You make a choice and I provide an outcome. So uh, over a hundred pages, single space, he said, if then. Now to me, when it's got more than a hundred pages, that's pretty significant. And that's something I need to understand. So that is the way the kingdom works. We make a choice to do an if, and when we do that, that choice contains within itself the inertia that takes it to the then, to the pre-described outcome. So I put 19 different dynamics in the book. It's called The Dynamic of Discipline, of Management, of Giving, Grace and Mercy, relationship, association, and it goes on ending up with the dynamic of morality. You know, the important thing is that we understand how the system works. God provided it for us to be successful. And if we don't know it or if we misunderstand it and try to make it a religious document or a regulation and a compliance exercise, then we miss the impact. Let me give you just an example. I mentioned this before we ended our first session. In our society and in our culture, we think if nobody sees us or we don't get caught, then no consequences. But the truth is, that's not the way it works. When we make a choice, a pre-described outcome is coming. Let's think of that. If you lie, on your income tax, if you lie to your family, your friends, you're getting that outcome. What if you watch pornography? No one may never see you and no one may never know it, but you go to that outcome that that choice takes you to. Now that's a lot different than a regulation and compliance. If I speed going down the interstate uh, and nobody sees me and I don't get caught, I think, I skated. I'm home free. I don't have any things that I have to worry about. No repercussions. The challenge and the difficulty that brings to us when we understand how the kingdom works and the dynamics, interactive, interrelated choices that we make always take us to an outcome. Whether anybody sees us, whether anybody knows about it or not, that's where we're going. And I know you know Example after example where that's true. I've talked about in here, one of the dynamics is unforgiveness. And all over the world, Fran and I have traveled to more than 60 countries where we've shared these values and these principles and these precedents too. We've shared them with uh, government leaders, with entrepreneurs, with small business people, with large business people. Uh, I've shared it in Intel. I've shared it many places. And Everywhere we go, I ask them about dynamics, and they are really taken back and have to stop and think about it. So I ask the question, let's talk about a dynamic that's pretty important. Let's talk about forgiveness. Forgiveness is an optional in the kingdom. God says you have to give because you are forgiven. And if you don't give, you get the results of not forgiving. So I asked him, I said, do you know anybody who has lived with unforgiveness, somebody who has just carried this thing with them and have refused to let it go and to forgive. And every continent, every place we've been, they always say, yes, we do. We know people that don't forgive and refuse to forgive. I said, okay, what are the results? What happens to them? And invariably they say, they get sick. They become ill. And very often, 
that bitterness causes them to die physically. It kills them. So that is a dynamic, a choice you make that's interactive. When you choose not to forgive, you choose to reap the outcome. A dynamic of conduct and behavior. God doesn't have to judge us. He gave us the government of heaven that he wants us to govern ourselves. We really, if we obeyed the things that he teaches us in scripture, we wouldn't have to have governments on the earth because the government of heaven would work and operate in our lives and we would have our own governance. Now, that's the plan. I don't want to get into it because I'm not going to do that. That's not the purpose of this. But do you think the governments on this earth were put here by God, that God himself created government? Do you think he created many of the things that we've engaged in and have accepted as the norm for our life when in reality, if we understood his plan, his system, his method, and his way of doing and being right, that's what the scripture says, that seek first. His system, his plan, his way of doing and being right, and all these other things will be added unto you. We get the things, but we have to understand how they work. They work when we make good choices. And the interesting thing is, there's no one who ever enters time and enters this planet that doesn't have the ability to make choices. That is the thing. If you don't like something that's happening in your life, you can make a choice that'll change it. If you're, if you're having trouble with weight, then you have the choice not to eat so much. If you're having trouble with anger, you have the ability to make the choice to create the environment and to make the discipline that keeps you from getting angry. God has made each of us with that ability and that capacity to live the life that he's called us to live. Because he's told us, he said, my plans for you are for good, for a hope, for a future. And it's easy to say, oh, it was because of my parents. It was because of my environment. It was because of this. It was because of that. But I want to tell you, if you're here and you're cognizant, and you're able to make a decision we are where we are because of the choices that we have made. And we can make good choices. That's what the kingdom system is all about. It teaches you how the system works interactively based upon your choice. So what we want you to take away from this today is that you have the ability to change your outcome. C.S. Lewis said, you can't go back and change the beginning, but you can begin where you are and change the ending. So that is our message today. We have to understand how to make good choices so that we can make good outcomes in our life. Our solar system and every created thing on the earth operates within a system. This is the result of design. Each system is definable and its operation is predictable. With great accuracy, the influences and the impacts of outside forces and the chosen actions of humanity on each system can be charted and forecast. There are dynamics of action and reaction for each system. Just as with the physical, scientific, mathematical, and all other systems, the kingdom system operates through dynamics, actions of conduct and behavior. Dynamics are an interactive system that involves competing and or conflicting forces. They are more than laws that involve regulation and compliance. The outcomes and the results are predictable and are completely determinable, as are the results of gravity or inertia. When we know and when we understand the dynamics of the kingdom system and the related actions and reactions, we can choose the outcomes of our lives for success. 
from Charlie Lewis, the author of The Kingdom System, A Pattern for Guaranteed Success, comes a new book that will change your life forever, Kingdomnomics. In this book, you will learn the secrets to the kingdom system as it pertains to your everyday life and how to get the desired results for your destiny. This book will change the way you think about God's system for success. For your gift to Kingdom School and Ministry, receive Charlie's new book, Kingdomnomics, today. We're so glad that you joined us and that you have participated in the things that God has shared with us about the way his system works. And it works through an interactive system involving competing and conflicting forces. And we get to choose our outcome by the action that we take. That's a lot different than the regulation and compliance. And we want you to know that. We want you to walk in that freedom that you don't have to be bound by religious structure, but you can go into that living relationship and interact with God by the choices that you make. They say that we charge the atmosphere with our words. What we say in, goes up in the atmosphere, and that's what comes down. And the thing that we know about that in the declaration we're going to read today is called Prayer of Commitment to the Word. And it says, Father, in the name of Jesus, the Charlie and Fran Lewis family, our heirs and our descendants forever, declare that we commit ourselves to walk in your word. We recognize that your word is integrity itself. Your word is steadfast. Your word is sure. Your word is eternal. And we trust our lives to the provisions of your word. You have sent your word forth into our spirits and into our minds. We let your word dwell in us richly in all wisdom. Your word does not depart out of our mouths. Your word is all that we speak. We meditate on your word day and night so that we may diligently act upon your word. Your word is the incorruptible seed that is abiding and living in our spirits and in our minds. Your word is growing mightily in us now. It is becoming dominant and is producing your nature and your life. Now that's half of that saying. And I want you to visit the website and get access to the books and get access to the materials that we have available because this is life to your spirit. The Lord said that he came that we might have life, that we might be full of life and abundant life. That's what God's plans are for us. And understanding the good news of the kingdom system that God himself, as Jesus Christ, delivered to the earth for you to engage and for you to be successful. God bless you.